Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Sauber Lab and today will be another video about Raspberry Pi. But before I explain why I'm gonna use Raspberry Pi, I'll explain the situation that I have. I like to travel and few times I stay in different hotels. And in these hotels, me and my family like to connect to Wi-Fi. Not necessary that it's safe to connect that specific Wi-Fi because I don't know what they're using that traffic or if uh, they want to control what I'm doing. And in this way, I decided to change a little bit the game and get Raspberry Pi. And with this Raspberry Pi plus one Wi-Fi adapter, could be these small ones or could be this a little bit bigger, I can convert this Raspberry Pi to a router. What it means? It means that all the internet traffic, all the Wi-Fi or cable will go to this Raspberry Pi, they will process the data. If I use a VPN, they will simulate that I'm in different position, make a tunnel for it, and that will create a Wi-Fi connection for me. And that Wi-Fi connection, I can connect all my device and I know that everything is going through my Raspberry Pi before I go to the internet. And if I use a tunnel, it's more safe than ever. So in this way, we're gonna explain it step by step. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel and let's understand a little bit more about it. So before we start to explain how you can do the installation or what application that you're gonna use, you need to understand what you need to have. So in my hand, I have Raspberry Pi 5, as I told, and this Raspberry Pi 5, I need to have a SD card. And also I need to have a Wi-Fi adapter. You're gonna ask why I need to have a Wi-Fi adapter if Raspberry Pi Red have Wi-Fi. It's because Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi will connect to the internet and this adapter will make sure that they will transmit the data or vice versa, depending on how you configure it. But you need to have the both things, otherwise without this, they will not connect and transmit at the same time, unless you want to choose the RJ45, so you don't need to have this second option, but it's always good to have this two options for you to control. So I have this one in mind, what we need to do, we can go come here in my computer and I will explain what application that you're gonna install. The application that you're gonna install will be Rasman AP, and that's uh, the name say, the easy full fixture wireless router setup Debian based service. And here we can get start or go inside. Before we go in inside or get set up, we need to see how it look like. And this one, if you already use a TP-Link with router, it's really similar, but it's using Debian. And here you can have a lot of information or not so much, depending on what you need to have. But the good things for this system is that you can connect directly for a VPN, you can have an ad block, you can have a breed mode. This one is quite easy to configure, it. they are ready for running Docker and made for IoT. So if we come here, they will give a little bit description of all the fixtures. They work with uh, 5G, they work with Dynamic DNS, auto extension, wireless, and other information. And here they will go step by step how to do the installation. But before we look for this installation, one thing that's interesting is this distribution that they support. You can have a Raspberry Pi that run Debian 12, that it's a bookworm. You can have a Raspberry Pi using the Debian 11, BUIs. So you can have a new Raspberry Pi and a old Raspberry Pi. In my case, I'm using the 5, but you could potentially use a old one or a simple one look like 2W. But before we go to this step, we need to see what have more as a system. They have a Debian and Ubuntu that work with 8664 bits, but it's not yet full release, it's in the beta stage. Because this system is called Rasmus AP, first thing that they released was the Raspberry Pi option. After this one, they started to look for other options. I don't doubt that uh, in soon future, they will have support for more systems. Mm -hmm. Have this one in mind, now we can start to do this installation. What we need to have, we need to install the Raspberry Pi OS in my Raspberry Pi before we do anything. So in this way, I will come here and I open my Raspberry Pi. As I told, 
if I go a little bit down here we can come here and choose device and if I select a Raspberry Pi 5 and choose they have support for bookworm exactly the same that I can have here but uh, suppose that I wanted to go for a uh, 2W and I come here they have the blue eyes and here have support as well so I can use a Raspberry Pi 5 or I can use a Raspberry Pi 2W and they will work pretty much the same way so now let's select the correct Raspberry Pi in my case will be Raspberry Pi 5 select my OS don't select the full desktop because they will use a necessary resource so go for this Pi OS others and look for the light option once that you choose the light option you can come here in storage and select the storage that you want in my case I already insert my 32 GB SD card so I'll select it and put next now I need to come here and edit why it's important because I need to make sure that all the configurations correctly first thing will be my host name I can leave Raspberry Pi my username in my case will be Sauber already put my password and here will be my wireless LAN why wireless LAN? because I don't want to use RJ45 in this installation because I want to make it look like access point or external point or hotpots so in this way I will leave my Wi-Fi and I need to come here in service and activate it and use password authentication if I don't do it I need to go fix my Raspberry Pi what is not interesting I can go directly for putty so in this way I will put save and I will put yes and I want to delete all the information remember if you put yes all the data that you have in your SD card will be lost so be sure that you do it in the correctly matter so now you can put yes and that will start to chew clean the SD card, install again the SD card and soon will be ready for me to use, so let's wait once they finish to do this initial setup, what you need to do? you need to get your Raspberry Pi again, you need to insert your SD card you need to insert your Wi-Fi adapter, remember I suggest you to use the blue color that will be the USB 3.0 and now I can only connect to my USB. Once that you power everything, they will take some minutes and they will make some noise initially until they start to set up everything and get ready for you. So now you need to try to discover the IP address for your Raspberry Pi. So in my case, I know that the IP address of my Raspberry Pi will be 192.168.1.84. Here in my putty, I can access it. So I tape here my IP address and put open. First time they will give this screen I'll put accept and now I can log in to my Raspberry Pi so I'll put Sauber and I'll put my password and here I have my system up running first thing that you should do you need to update your system I suggest you to update your system anytime that you're gonna do a new installation or you just got your system to make sure that everything is update correct once that you finish in our case we're gonna upgrade and we'll put the full upgrade for my system, we'll put enter. My case doesn't have anything to upgrade, so it's nice. I will put clear. And here I can start to install the Raspberry AP. In the Raspberry AP to install will be core sl install Raspberry AP slash bash and we'll put enter. This stage will take a little bit longer and they will have some prompts. Most of them you can only go ahead and click next. In some cases, you need to look a little bit better and put no if you don't want to configure it. All the configuration that you do in this stage, you're not going to be able to recover it or rechange unless you format all your system and do all the steps again. In my case, they already tell that I'm use the bookworm and that's its revision 64 bits. For me, it's fine. So now we'll look for this direction. They say that the configuration directory will be set Raspberry Pi and use this root connection. For me, it's totally fine. We'll put yes. And here will be similar information. We'll put yes. And that they will start to install all the components. This stage takes a few seconds. And that once that they finish, they will give more question or give ask you more things for you to see if you want to install or not so let's wait a little bit next question that we'll ask it's about php con optimization i will put yes and they will ask about enable raspberry pi control service i will put yes again 
And now they ask if I want to choose enable ad block. My case will put no. And the same thing for the open VPN, I will put no. And the same thing for REST API and VPN tunnel and VPN. So all the VPN configuration put no. If you want to configure it, those put yes, but put in this stage because you're not going to be able to reconfigure it in the future. So now, once that we finish this first stage, we can close our put because we're not going to use anymore and we can open the IP address 192.168.1.184 to start to do the initial configuration. Here, first time that you try to open this IP address, they will ask you the password. So we're going to use admin and secret so we can only come here admin secret and put login now we have our application running what we need to configure it or what we need to look before we do any configuration will be first hotspot here's the hotspot that will connect or at least will allow that uh, your users connect it they will appear as a Raspberry web GUI so we'll put as a cyber lab and i will put save settings security it's really important you change your password and this reason that ask change me so we'll put sauber slash one two three and this will be my new password and we'll put save settings now my password and my wi-fi hotspot it's connect or is created so we'll put start hotspot now my hotspot is started what we need to do we can come here in my networking and we can check what is going on and here will be my internal LAN this will be my gateway and this will be the internet access I don't have internet yet because they're not connected for any Wi-Fi client what we need to do it's coming here in my Wi-Fi client and I need to choose what Wi-Fi client that I want to connect he will appear at least for all the Wi-Fi around of me and here will be my Wi-Fi home 13 and to connect for a specific Wi-Fi I will come here in my home 13 put my password and put add in this way they will take few seconds until they connect and once that you have this one Wi-Fi update successful I can always come here and put connect and they will connect to my Wi-Fi specifically new not work selected and connected so if I come here in dashboard, now I have a little bit more internet and here will be how much Wi-Fi utilization I have. So now in this stage, I can go there and connect to my Wi-Fi, call CyberLab and start to use it. Other thing that's interesting, I can come here in my DCP, I can change it for dynamic IP. Otherwise, there will be a static and this is the IP address for my router. And here will show a little bit of usage over time that I'm using because I'm using Raspberry Pi 5 with 4 GB and this application is quite light. I think that it never get more than 25 or 30 percent. The same thing for my CPU. Maybe the temperature will go a little bit up, but because they have a really good cooling system, it will not affect so much. Here in language, I can change my language. Here in theme, I can change it advanced I can change and here will be to restart all the configuration so in this way we arrive in the end of this video and now you know how to use your Amazon Pi plus a Wi-Fi adapter to make the hotspot in this way when you're traveling or when you are anywhere you can use this device to centralize and control all your data and also if you want to make a tunnel to better usage so in this way, we arrive at the end of this video. If you guys like this video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave a like. Consider subscribe for the channel if you're not yet. And see you next time. Bye.